You all set? Yep. You do your stretches? You ready to go? Probably should. And hold. everyone, I'm Ryan. And I am Steve, and this is 60 Second Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, fixing, modding, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. I thought your name was Robin. Hi, I'm Robin, the manager. Robin, can I call you Robin? Yes, please okay. do. My, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> that is an inside joke that no one listening to the show is going to get, from, except for maybe like 10 people. All right. Uh, first topic was suggested by Nicholas Martinez. Mm-hmm. He said, what is something in the guitar slash bass world that other people love, but you just can't get into it? Music. Music. I, I don't like it in what general. The, what the hell is music? <laughs> I hate it. I just want to turn knobs and make weird noises. I don't want to, I don't want to listen to a Ugh. song. Are you kidding me? Gross. No way. But like gear wise, Steve, like, is there a piece of gear that seems like everyone else like cares about deeply and like. You just uh, don't give no craps at all. <laughs> like everyone gives a lots of craps about it, but you don't give any craps at all. Um, Stratocasters. <laughs> <laughs> you have a Strat. I, you have a I, good Strat. I own. Yeah. And that, I think for whatever reason, that's, I, I, that's like the only Strat that I've ever bonded with. All right. Maybe because when I bought it, it was, I think that was my third electric guitar. And uh, my second electric guitar was like a Squire Telecaster mm. that I needed. A, I needed a mallet taken to a couple frets. I had a couple uh, bumpy frets. Bumpy. What's what's the thing where like the frets kind of uh, like they're like there's a divot worn in them. No, no, it's like it sprouted. Not, oh. not on the ends. It was like just not tapped in all the way. Gotcha, gotcha. So it it, it, it was uh, like floating out of the fretboard. Yeah, I think uh, because I, I had like. To a couple spots, my D chords never sounded right. It would they because uh, I think because there was like a fret that was gotcha. It, it, it was always a little sharper than it should be. It was like it sounded like it would sound like an intonation issue, but it was only with like open D chord. So what is it about strats that you don't think you? Like? I don't know. I just like when I go to a store, like I never too many th- pickups. I never go- think like, oh, I really want to play the strat. I right. really want to try out this strat. You never, a see a, you never see a strat yeah. pop up and you're like, oh, that's and a good like, strat. And like, I know a lot of people who like Nashville Telecasters, so I'm like, get that strat out of here. <laughs> what are you doing? I see you your doing? tricks. You're trying to sneak in here, you dirty strat. Yeah. I, I don't, don't I don't like tube screamers. I'm just going to say it. I don't like them. You got a picture of your, you got a pedal with your, with a drawing of you on it. That's basically. Yeah, but that's like a modified tube screamer. Yeah, okay. I like tube screamers when they become so modified that they don't sound like a tube <laughs> screamer anymore. <laughs> I've had, I feel like I've had good success with tube screamers. I definitely think I like tube screamers more than clons in terms of like oh, drive yeah. type. I do not like clons either. Um, but uh, I like those mids, man. You play Fender amps too. The tube yeah. screamer is supposed to be the perfect compliment for that. Like, Tube screamers are, they're good. They're a good you just, circuit. You just they don't like sound them. good. I they're don't just like them. No, like, I don't get along with them. You don't get along with them. Well, like, especially when I'm playing at home, every time I plug in a tube streamer, I can play for it. I can play towards what a tube streamer wants mm-hmm, to sound like, mm-hmm. and I can make it sound like the thing. But I don't really enjoy them. And every you know, every now and then I try one, I was like, oh, yeah, hey, this is a cool version of a tube screamer. Hey, I like this. Or I like how this is different from a normal tube screamer. Okay. But then, like, every normal unmodified tube screamer I've ever played, I've been like, I really don't like this. But in, the, in, yeah. a, in a live scenario, yeah, because it buys you the mids. Mm-hmm. And it does that EQ bump to, to put you in the mix. Like, they're they're fantastic for that. I'm just going to use an EQ pedal <laughs> to do that with the drives I actually like, uh, you know? There's something yeah, about, I like, guess. a normal stock, like, TS9 or TS, you know, whatever, that has that, like, clean blended with fizzy distortion sort of sound mm-hmm. that I really, I don't get it. 
I don't get it. I, I understand why it works. I understand that it works really well with like hot tube amps. Like you've got a hot tube amp. It's already on the edge of distortion. And then you push it with this tight fizzy sort of like clean blended distortion. And it, it kind of pushes it over the edge. But that's, I, it's just not how I like to play. And like you mentioned Klons. Like, does anyone actually like Klons? Like <laughs> every, every, like it's, I feel like clons fit in this uh, the same space. Um, the people who well, love, I know, I the know people who love clons are like, oh yeah, I just you know I roll back the gain and just you you know it does this magical yeah. thing as a as a preamp as a as a clean boost. Like, do you actually like clons? I, people say the same thing about tube screamers too. It's like, oh well, you know the best tube screamer sound is is gain down volume, which I mean I I do but like you, that sound. With but. the gain down on tu- on a tube screamer, you can still hear that it is doing something. Yeah, true. With with a clon, you turn down the gain. And it's like. Yeah, I guess it's warming it up and stuff, and it's doing a little bit of an EQ shift, but there's no drive there. Mm-hmm. Like a, a tube screamer, no matter how far you yeah, turn it you down, there's there's drive. There's always going to be a little bit of drive. Yeah, um, I think the, I think I, people I, only like clones because they're expensive, and it's like a <laughs> it's it's a but status I mean, symbol they're, thing. They're expensive for a reason. Somebody had to drive that price up. They're expensive the same for the same reason that NFTs are expensive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Clons are an NFT is what I'm uh, saying. They kind of, I mean, in a sense, there's a limited, very limited supply. I think the vast majority of the fandom for the Clon is, is speculative investment. I don't know, man. I don't like it. The people who love Clons, who actually like Clons, you can tell because they're, they're using clones. You know, they're like, oh, I actually like clones. Here's, you know, here's a couple clones that I really, really like that do right. specific things that, you know, I feel like are, are special. It's not the person who has an original silver clone. You don't think Josh clone. Scott is a clone fan? Well, he's a different type of person. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other I'll, level of gear addiction. I like the TikToks that have been, because I, I saw he did one and there's some other ones that are the whole, uh, uh, what's a what's a thing that you collect that would be hard to explain to other people or, or that uh-huh. that means something to your community but to nobody else and like he's holding all of his clones uh, Andy uh, Guitar Geek um, did one that was uh, I forget what he was holding but it was some other pedal hmm. like that was like vintage rare thing I think I don't know he was holding something what were you holding Andy mm-hmm. let us Andy know. what were you holding let us know in the comments what else do I not like? I don't like orange amps. I've never found an orange amp that. Are you more of a green amp? Yeah, I guy? love them green amps. I do like it when I see there the the, uh, the various different other companies that are doing orange style amps and they just do a completely different color. Like I think there's ones that are purple and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't remember. Um, it's a very specific sound and it, it 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 doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, I don't remember the story, but there was a company called Mad Amp. Um, that does, uh, they're the ones that do the green. Right. And they've been around for like a very long time as well. Um, so I don't know oh, since 1964. So I don't wow. really know what their story is. Uh, I, like I said, I used to know, but like literally the green mat amp is very clearly. Oh yeah. Trying, it's to, trying be, to be an orange. Trying, and I say it's trying, like it's from that same, that same era. As far as I'm aware, like they're an old, like, and they're stoner, they're like stoner doom yeah. amps. Yeah. And they're British. I appreciate I appreciate that other people get amazing sounds out of them and a lot of people love orange amps to death. But I've never played through one and and felt any connection at all. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do you have any amps that like you just don't like? Sorry, I'm reading. I'm reading about this. <laughs> <laughs> Orange and Mad Amp were like were partners at, oh, okay. at one point. So there's some drama uh, there. They were a collaboration. Orange Mad Amp amplifiers and mixers proved to be popular and robust. Orange and Mad Amp parted ways as they wanted to develop in different directions. Mad Amp concentrated on the booming disco market. Huge mistake. I don't know. It probably did pretty well at the time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, amps. I always, I. I don't know what I have on uh, as my uh, base amp on my uh, HX Stomp right now because uh, I've been playing so much guitar. Hmm. 
Uh, I, I don't, I kind of just practice space sometimes, but I don't really use it that, that often lately. Uh, but a lot of times the Ampeg set points, like the Ampeg SVT uh, presets, they're always like grindy. And, and maybe it's just because I'm playing by like when, when I'm playing by myself, I don't like that. Right. But I've talked to other people and it seems like that is a very popular sound for a long time. And for some reason, I think when I hear ba- like bass on a track, I don't, it always sounds, I think we're, let me, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. I, I, I'm starting to suspect that recorded dirty bass sounds a lot cleaner on rec, like on a record, uh, than it does when I'm just doing it myself. Because like sure. I said, this there's this popular Ampeg SVT sound that like it seems like everybody used, and of course it was the pop punk sound. And whenever I find a preset, and someone's like, "Oh, this is a great like amp, a great example of an Ampeg preset," and I listen to it, I'm like, "This just sounds really dirty." Um, but also, you know, we I think we both use. Do you use Chart Builder? No. Uh, well, maybe my worship leader did. Okay, does, so, but I don't. <laughs> so there's this app called Chart Builder. It's part of the um, multi tracks app suite. Okay. And one of the things it has is it's has obviously it's called chart builder it has your charts uh but you can also like pitch uh if you have like the subscription you can pitch the key and um and then you can isolate the individual tracks right and so if you're if you're the guitar player and you want to hear uh, a certain guitar part you can just like isolate electric guitar one or electric guitar two or you know the bass and a lot of the bass parts on a lot of these uh Worship songs and church songs ha- are like fuzz tones and like distorted bass tones. Interesting. Yeah, you know, on like choruses and stuff. And the thing is, is when, like I said, like when you're listening to the bass, yeah, I guess I can, I can in hear the that context in my head. of the full song, like with all the other instruments in, I feel like that fuzz or whatever, like that, uh, that, um, dirt sound kind of just sits in with. There's usually like a sub bass, like a synth bass, and everything else going on that it just kind of gets lost. But and, and so I think it at makes the the bass sound really fat in that context. But you don't necessarily realize that it's overdriven. Sure. So I'm willing to. My all of this to say, like I'm willing to concede that maybe the it's been a long road I getting know, to the end of this story. Uh, it's it's been a long road getting from there to here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that maybe the Ampeg thing is just a me thing. Right. Whereas Stratocasters, <laughs> that's on you. Yeah, that's your fault. That's your fault. No, I hear what you're saying. Like, I think in our I, a, a lot of times with with guitar distortion as well, like. In our minds, like, oh, man, this classic recording had the heaviest distortion. Oh, this searing lead tone yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And then when you actually sit and listen to it, you realize, man, this really doesn't have that much dirt on it at all. And, like, the really heavy stuff that gets used yeah, kind of just disappears in the mix. Like, cleaner signals, even though we, we love playing with the thunder. We love playing with heavy distortion. Yeah, It feels great. But it doesn't work the way that... We think it works in a recording mix. And sometimes it's the opposite. I've been listening to a lot of um, like 90s uh, stuff and like the little guitar solo, actually all of, like the guitar parts all over um, Semisonic's Closing Time. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of fuzz factory on that track. Sure. I, in my head, like it's kind of a power ballad like mostly clean tone. And then when I listen to it closely... I'm like, no, there's there's definitely lots of fu- fuzz on this. And a lot of those like 90s like gin blossoms, there's a lot of fuzz in gin blossoms. There's a lot of fuzz in a lot of the acts from that time. So it, so it's weird. Anyway, things people love that you hate, precision basses. You don't like precision basses. They're not comfortable to me. I, I guess l- you, I, I guess you always have had jazz I, basses. I like, uh, I like to pick up basses. It's not a sound thing. So even like, I don't, I, it's nothing. I like the sound of a P bass pickup, but if I don't have somewhere worth that, like bridge, like a jazz bass bridge. So I'll play PJ basses. Right. But just single precision bass 
Uh, do mid- PJ bases have a P body or a J body? Usually a P body. <laughs> so it's not the body. It's the count of pickups. It's, it's literally, it's that they're just not comfortable for me. Uh, and I think because we, of the pickups or because of the body, because of the pickup, because there's nowhere for me to put my thumb. Oh, so on like I a, see. on a PJ, I just put my thumb on the J pickup. Even if I roll the J pickup all the way off, I, I'm playing over it with that there. Like maybe if I was playing more pick style, then so it would be an got, issue. But if you got a P base, yeah, you could fix the issue with a thumb rest. Yeah. Okay. Probably. <laughs> I could put a thumb rest behind the thing. Right. That's pretty common, right? It's, so it's not, I mean, I'm not saying it's not. I, I'm just saying like it's a beloved instrument that I feel like I would need to modify to get sure. it to work with sure. the way that I play. Like you couldn't pick up a, a P bass off the shelf and be like, I'm ready to go gig. Yeah. You'd need to grab yeah. a thumb rest and a screwdriver. It's something very, that's very like particular to no, me I because I feel the same way about um, uh, Music Man basses. Because even though they have the big like bridge humbucker, they uh, they do this weird molding on their pickup body that's like too smooth. So it, I've always had trouble like putting my thumb on it. Huh. We I don't know. It's dumb. I know how. I know it's just, it's. Dumb, I used to be that but... way with like the full tray Telecaster bridges. Oh yeah, yeah. Where I had a lot of trouble like strumming and playing around those, and then eventually like I just learned like how to hold my hand around them, and it doesn't yeah. bother me anymore. But yeah, there are like hardware things. I remember that because I learned on Strat style guitars, you know, mm-hmm. like the, my first couple electric guitars were very squarely Strat style right. and like, you know, neck and bridge placement and stuff like that. The first time I played uh, Gibson style guitars, that had any sort of arch top on them at all, like a Les Paul, an ES335 style, whatever like that. The height of the strings off the body completely messed oh, with me. Oh, yeah. Like, I couldn't handle yeah. it. It was like... Wow, these strings are like four inches off the body, or they yeah. might as well be. Like they're floating out in the, space. The here. first time I played an SG in a store, I got I felt like I was having vertigo. Oh yeah, because they have the, like the the neck is tilted against the body. Yeah, it, there's so many it angles is a super we- and like, whatever going on. Gibson's for being such a classic brand. Super weird feeling guitars, like super like what is. Th- is there a single Gibson guitar that's ergonomic? <laughs> I don't you know like what? it like at all. I like my Les Paul. It's very comfortable. Every Les Paul I've played feels really bad sitting down for me. Well, like it fits. Don't it sits play on, sitting down. It sits on my leg really uh, weird. That's because they're meant to rock and roll, Ryan. <laughs> you don't rock and roll sitting down, okay? <laughs> like the way it fits against my belly. And my leg, it and it sits way off to the side where like a Fender style like or like ergonomic style guitar sits more centered on my leg. Where Les Paul feels like it's really hanging off my leg, which has always felt really weird. And I have multiple Les Paul style bodies. I've got uh, two Les Paul style guitars over there. Yeah, I'm staring. I at have them. I have a Gibson SG. I have a Flying V with a Fender neck on it. I have an Explorer with a Fender neck on it. I've got a bunch of Gibson style bodies around here. Uh, don't tell the cops, uh, <laughs> they're buried in the backyard. Uh, no, that is a joke about murder guys. I'm sorry. Wow. Uh, so I have full experience with those body shapes. Mm-hmm. So I'm not like, just talking out of my ass. Like they're, they're generally uncomfortable, especially the Explorer. <laughs> they're fun to look at though. Right. I don't know. So what, what was my tally? I don't, I don't like. Clons, I don't like tube screamers. I don't like orange, orange amps. amps. I think that Gibson shapes are not comfortable. You don't like strats. You don't like that Ampeg uh, base model yeah. that you have. You don't like P bases. Yeah. Fight us. Oh, I don't like Rickenbackers. <laughs> <laughs> I probably got more things that I don't like, but those were the ones that immediately came to mind. Right. They live in my frontal cortex. What about you guys? Tell us in the comments. What gear does everyone else love that you just can't stand? I mean, I think most people don't like probably a good percentage of the gear out there. And that's okay. And they're like, oh, everyone loves this. And it's like, do they? I think some people love it. Not, mean, everyone, for, not everyone loves everything. You know what? Pro, one of the most common things I see on online guitar forums and Facebook groups and whatever. Bunch is, of complaining. Well, that too. Uh, 
wife jokes <laughs> is people saying, I don't get fuzz. Yeah. Like, so it's okay. Like, but I can, I can understand. You don't have to get everything. I can understand people saying like, I don't get along with fuzz. Like I get it. Like it's, it's a very specific effect. And if you don't play yeah. in that direction, like you're not going to get along. No, with they fuzz. just said they don't get fuzz. They just don't get they don't, it. They don't get it. What's, maybe they haven't. What's the point? Maybe they haven't gotten fuzz. Maybe someone needs to give them the gift of fuzz. That you could know? be. That could you be. know, they just haven't been given. You know, if you know someone in your life who hasn't gotten fuzz yet, give them fuzz. I wish we were going into a sponsor I spot know. right now. Should, can we do that? We could. Which one do you want to do? Let's do demonic machines. They got a bunch of fuzz here. They got a $50 fuzz. They got a $50 fuzz. Does someone in your life... We're not doing the sketch. Sorry. (laughs) Does someone in your life not get fuzz? That's because they haven't gotten fuzz. And if you want to get them fuzz so that they can have gotten fuzz, (laughs) might as well start with a $50 fuzz from Demonic Machines. They've also got the Dragonaut here, which I used on my church board, believe it or not, this last Sunday. And you know what? It worked. It worked really well. It's uh, it's really great at tone shaping, various different distortion sounds. Go watch my video for it. You'll hear what I'm talking about. It's not just this straight ahead, one voice sort of distortion. You can really dial in a bunch of different sounds. It's got two foot switches. It's got a little switch there. It's got a mass knob. What other pedals have a mass knob? Come on, a go mass, check it out. A mass. And then, of course, there is the Erica's Trip, which is an octave fuzz with no knobs at all. And if your friends don't get fuzz, they're really not going to get this one. <laughs> this is a very specific pedal for very specific people that like very unique sounds. Go watch my video for these. That's what I'm saying. So huge thanks to Demonic Machines for once again yep, sponsoring. Check them out. DemonicMachines.com. Links in the description. Uh, it feels like we're tired this episode. No, I'm just trying to figure out how to move some things around now. <laughs> I ruined Steve's. Plan. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Uh, let's hit this ad. All right. Well, this is a Bond electric glide. I do not know what this is. I'm just going to read. I'll read the description, I guess. Okay. Rare 1985 Bond electric glide electric guitar uh, comes with factory preamp and hard shell case. As played by U2's The Edge on the Joshua Tree and Big Audio Dynamite's Mick Jones. Excellent condition located in Concord. This, so this is still telling me nothing about this guitar. It looks like it's a video game controller. Well, these are interesting guitars. I've seen these before online. I almost feel like we might have talked about them, but maybe we didn't since you were not familiar with them. Um, I'm going to show you something that you can't see in any of these pictures. Check out the frets. Oh. There's no frets. The whole neck has like this roofing shingle thing going on. Weird. Like that. And so, te- yeah, technically they function as frets, but it's not a single metal bump. The whole right. thing, I think, is made out of carbon fiber. Like, this is a really early guitar to be made out of carbon fiber. Maybe it's plastic? I don't know. I've always been under the impression that they are carbon fiber. Um, but they're full of all kinds of electronics and stuff. The switching on them is really different. Yeah. Um, it's a stepped phenolic resin fingerboard. <laughs> so it's made out of it's made out of some kind of resin. Maybe not carbon fiber, but some kind of resin. And then the pickup switching, volume, and tone controls are completely digital and powered by a large motherboard. So these little rocker switches here are the volume and tone controls. Okay. They work like a TV remote. Like you want to turn up your volume, like click, 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 oh my click. Oh gosh! <laughs> and it's you know, like you have ten different levels of volume or something like that. It's not. There's no knobs, and you see this weird like ashtray thing up here. Yeah. What do you think that is? I know what it is because I'm read. I assume because I'm reading this. Is that the LED That's readout? An LED display like a screen. Little TV <laughs> built into your guitar. Yeah. But it looks like it looks like a little LED number control panel from the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Like it's just yeah, you know, three yeah. three digits. So it gives you three digits with like a bunch of different numbers for each setting that you're going what the through. Heck, it's bonkers. Apparently, this was the solo on Joshua Tree's One Tree Hill. Uh, so thanks to this guitar, we got a 
somewhat memorable early 2000s WB or CW, CW program. You, uh, you can tell how much The Edge loved this guitar by the way that he continued to use it on all his recordings. <laughs> Making his way, man, oh, he's a model guitar making his way into one recording isn't exactly a sign that it's the best guitar ever. Like, it's definitely quirky. And if I saw this, I've said this so many times before about mini guitars, but if I saw this hanging in a pawn shop window, I would be going inside to touch it and check it out. Yeah. It, it just, so from what I'm reading about it, it's not that it was a bad guitar per se. It's just that it was way too expensive for what for like the manufacturing. Right. right. Well, they want fourteen hundred dollars for it. Um, I don't know. Like the electronics are pretty goofy, mm-hmm. but at the same time, if I'm honest with myself, I run all my guitars wide open. I never turn down the volume. I, I, I never turn down the tone. So who cares? I'll just run it wide open. Like it doesn't really matter. The pickup selector, like push button switches, are goofy, but if they work, they work. But I would, I could see some, I could see someone spending fourteen hundred dollars on this because the fretboard, the frets on it are so unique. Yeah, and it is a very specific historical guitar, in a way. It is definitely like, I want to say it's a guitar from its time, but I think it's a, it's way ahead of its time. Like, I think it was trying to do things that the technology was not ready for yet. Like a composite resin, carbon fiber, whatever it is, body. That's not a bad idea. And that's been done. Well, the fretboard idea, I can't say if it's a good idea or a bad idea without trying it. Somehow the, uh, so they don't do quite the same thing. Uh, but somehow uh, Aristides guitars got the, got a name drop paragraph in here as the Dutch ma- guitar manufacturer Aristides Instruments endeavors on a similar path since 2007. However, they use a specifically designed composite rather than regular carbon fiber. So I, it is carbon fiber. I think the body was carbon fiber. It's just that the fretboard was this phenolic resin. Right. Uh, Aristides uses rich light uh fretboards though so that's kind of different different than that i mean it looks attractive it's not an ugly guitar no it's it seems appropriately futuristic this one there was one on reverb for 1200 bucks that sold eight years ago so who knows what they sell for now if it would be fun to run into one of these that was kind of broken like the guts were broken so you had an excuse and non-salvageable that's the fantasy mm-hmm. here. Non-salvageably mm-hmm. broken. So you have an excuse to gut this thing and start over. Right. It would be fun to, like, mount a little, like, TV screen in that little viewer window or something oh like gosh. that. Put a little, put a little, <laughs> make it bigger, mount, install a Game Boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, hack some game controls into there and play little video games in on be- your guitar in between songs. There's like out from out in your little corner of the stage. Do, 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 I think do, that do, little do, like viewport is, is really the goofiest part of it. And the rest of it is, it was further for, far enough ahead of its time that it's not off putting. Right. And it's not completely head scratching. It's interesting though. It's interesting. Thank you for sending that in, Michael Krauss. All right, what next? What are we doing now? Um, let's do some housekeeping real quick. All right. Um, this, uh, If you want to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com, where for as little as a dollar a month, uh, you can uh, help support the production of the show. So this uh, week, we've got uh, Nathan Jolly joining us at the $1 level. So we'll get the update. Also, at the end of the show, we'll uh, you'll be listed in the credits. The production a huge, credits. A humongous honor. It really is to see your name scroll up. People get really excited about that. They should. It's fun. Um, I was really, really all, you know, he's in, uh, he's a Patreon. So I'll say this. We played a uh, Kirk, Kirk Bolo's song last week. Mm-hmm. 
and his uh, his daughter and his guitar tech both watched the video, or at least scrolled to the end to see what our reaction was uh, on a song. So, and it was a really good. We've been getting really good songs. We lately. have. We have watched us get a stinker I this know. episode. I need to pick the song still. <laughs> also. I was it last pick the song. I just play whatever you guys said. Yeah, we play them in order that we receive them. Uh, either last week or the week before, I said that if you send us stickers, I'm going to start putting them on a guitar, and then when the guitar is completely covered, we're going to give the guitar away. I picked the guitar, and it's a good one. It's not a trash guitar. I'm not grabbing the Zue or anything like that. It's the Cyclone, guys. I'm going to give the Cyclone away. We're going to cover up the Ryan flesh-colored paint. Oh, you think you're going to cover the front and the back? Yeah, we're covering all, all the right. paint. All the paint has to be covered. We already got one sticker in, and we have some more mail here. You want to start cracking up sure. open some of that mail, Steve, uh, while I do this? Will do. This is from Red Bend Farm. Let's see what this says. So this one gets the honor of being the first one on there. Stick it right there. Oh, there's no sticker in here. Uh -oh. Just a letter. This one feels like it has stickers in it. I'll open it. Oh, this is a letter saying that the the pedal did arrive. Why did it say that? I got, I don't know. Okay, very cool. The pedal did make it. The Azor pedal made it to that address. This one has stickers. Um, here, you can take a look at the letter. Hey, guys, I really enjoy the podcast. Enclose are a few stickers for whatever sticker project you decide to do. I'm a psychotherapist full-time, but I opened a recording studio last year. I don't know why that's funny. I've also played guitar my uh, and run live sound at my church. My recording studio is Decay Music Studio in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, the first band I recorded with were all tattoo artists. They made me uh, the logo on the stickers as part of their payment. The band is Bullface. They're a fun, old-school 70s punk band. Uh, hit me up if you're ever passing through the Cornhusker State. Currently, I have a Facebook page for my studio, and I'm working on a website. Uh, yep. Cool. Very cool. Thanks, uh, thanks, David, for sending the sticker. So that, now, I really like that logo. That's It's fun. really fun. So now we've got two stickers on this. When it's completely covered, I'm going to have to figure out a way to give it away now. Red Hot Chili Pepper style. Now. I guess we're transitioning straight into what's new. Well, no, we still got two packages to open here, well, Steve. Well, this is part of what's new. Oh, okay. This is our what's new. <laughs> I didn't have anything new to I know, talk this about. This is why this is your what's new. We I've got a blade here. We should borrow my saved, blade. We should have saved some of this mail for. Next we week. have more mail for next week, Steve. Ooh. This is where that's I, how much mail we got. Slice my hand open. That. Oh my gosh! Is that from? That's from Redbubble, right? So who knows what that is? This is an artist on Redbubble. It doesn't yeah. say. Well, are you familiar with Redbubble? Yeah, it's like print on demand. Yeah. I already know what this is, Steve, and you're going to think it's this, hilarious. Is this uh, I Love Joe Rogan? Poundland. Poundland. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, wear this shirt down to Pound Town. All right. This is, uh, this is a black shirt. <laughs> I promise that unless it's horrifically vulgar, I'm going to wear every shirt I receive. In a video. <laughs> I want you to wear that. <laughs> but I'm not Ryan. I know. That's what make it funny. <laughs> uh, Is this supposed to be the Joe Rogan shirt? Someone said they were going to send me a shirt that I said know, I was a Joe says, Rogan fan. Dear 60 Cycle Bums, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to wear this. There's no other notes. It just says, Dear 60 Cycle Bums. Because it's shipped to 60 Cycle Bombs. Yeah, there was no note with uh, the Poundland shirt either. So uh, thank you, whoever you people are that are sending shirts. We appreciate you. Yeah, I think Circular is a, is kind of like uh, the same deal as Redbubble. You can kind of design your That's own thing. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm going to wear that shirt to church. <laughs> I'm Ryan and I'm a moron. No, Poundland. <laughs> <laughs> You got anything else new, man? I don't. Do you? Uh, you know what? I'll save my what's new for next week. Sure. It, it's, it's timeless. 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 Uh, next ad? Uh, yes. So this isn't really an ad. It's more like a news thing. Uh, the There was a fire at the Ensenada Fender Factory. And it's hard. to. There's only one picture. And a very small blurb, I and it was from five days ago when we recorded this, and I wasn't able uh -huh. to find 
any new information. So we don't know the extent of the fire, but Fender's like my thinking on this is Fender has already been raising prices because they've been saying that demand is so high and they're like trying to like pull back demand by raising prices. Mm -hmm. Like everyone is suffering this right now. Like, they they're listing stuff. They're they're launching products, and everything's getting stuck in production. Everything's getting stuck in shipping, and so there's not enough product to sell because people are buying it at the moment that it becomes available. This is not going to help. I even if the damage is minimal, if it slows down or stops production in part of the Ensenada factory for even a week. Yeah. That's significant. It doesn't look like there's any other updates. No, I couldn't find any. Um the the only the, the the more recent posts I found out on it weren't like articles, they were people talking about it in forums. You know what it probably is, man, is uh they're so far be- they're like not behind, but they're they have to keep their schedule so fast and I mean it is wood. Uh, they're probably just like, brr, 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 and like they're going so fast that the wood, it's wood. It, it's it, friction. Friction. They caught fire. They're making guitars so fast that the friction of them making yeah. guitars caused I mean, the fire. Okay. How do you start a fire, right? You get two sticks and you rub them together. That's right? how I two, do it. Two pieces of wood. That's how together, grandpa right? did yep. it. That's how grandma did it. That's how my kids are going to so do it. So here's what I'm thinking is somebody like they had a body, they had a neck, they like put it together so fast. That it just caught fire. It happens. It happens. I mean, fire has got to be a huge risk any place where there's a lot of woodworking going on. There's a lot of sawdust going around. There's a lot of like wood scrap and wood waste. Like, I'm kind of surprised it doesn't happen more often. I've driven past the Ensenada factory. It's not a huge building. Maybe it's bigger than I realized it was. But you would need to wear this shirt at NAM, dude. <laughs> I'll do it. I I will definitely be wearing that shirt. Um, man, that's a bummer, though. Yeah. Like it from this picture, it kind of looks like a dumpster is on fire. It's hard to tell. If, I guess it is engulfing the side of a yeah. building. It says no one was injured, uh, and everyone had to be evacuated. So there's I, like you said, there's no further information. The article that I found on it was. Um, also from five days ago. So. I saw a lot of jokes about like, you know, roasted maple necks and stuff like that. <laughs> does does and, Squire use roasted maple? Do they do roasted maple? Uh, I don't know. Is he acoustic? This is acoustic Mexico. Sonic? This is Mexico, not Indonesia or China, dude. This is Mexican strats. What did I say? Squire. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You're asking if there's there's Mexican strats. Yeah. Or Mexican is, is fenders that, is with the roasted maple. Is the Sonic? Yeah. Roasted maple? I think so. That's what caught fire. The Acoustasonics is all those lithium batteries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Dang it. I broke my pen. <laughs> you were so excited about lithium batteries that you snapped your pen in half. I was thinking about the Beastie Boys in this ad, this article. Are you saying it was sabotage? I'm not ruling it out. <laughs> Who would do that? Who would sabotage Fender's Mexico plant? Gibson. You think Gibson would do that? Uh, yeah. Got to get some more Epiphone sales. Are we going to get sued because you said that? <laughs> Gibson, we are not we're actually accusing you of espionage. We're going to have a, we're, we're going to have to add the, the, uh, this is for entertainment purposes yeah. only. <laughs> this parody. This is parody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's espionage. No, I, it's, I think it's a, it's a factory. Factories catch fire all the time. Right, right. It's like the, I mean, it's the, the second time, most common thing that factories do. Yeah, they, they produce build, goods and they catch fire. And they catch on fire. In all in all seriousness, like I hope I hope they're back up and running. I hope that it doesn't impact their business. What if this was a serial arsonist and there was this factory fire? If it was with, a serial arsonist, they would have burned down General Mills. <laughs> oh man! I haven't I haven't drank enough. For, to, you haven't drank really that anything funny. yet. I know <laughs> that joke would be better if I had. That's where dad jokes come from from sober dads. Um, 
Oh, man. No, I was going to say, like, maybe this fire was started by, had the same cause uh, as the the bad fire. The bad, uh, the petit ant distributors yeah, fire yeah. up in L.A. I don't know. Well, that one was started by the neighboring factory catching oh, on fire. Or so you think. Mm-hmm. They were started, the neighboring factory, on fire to get two, to two petit Two fires at musical instrument factories, like... Years apart, 150 <sighs> miles apart, 150 miles and like two years apart, can't be a coincidence. It's, it can't. There's no possible way. I see a connection. Right, right now, you need to put the. Uh, we need to predict where the, the next one is going to happen. Meme, the meme of Charlie from Always Sunny, where he's got the the red yarn board. So, I mean, when the third one happens, then we'll see the the range. We'll be able to triangulate. You'll we'll be able to triangulate the the center point of where the arsonist. Are lives. there any guitar factories in uh, in Arizona? <laughs> I'm not sure. That's oh. a good question. Arizonans, zonies, let us know. Zonies, did you know that we call you zonies here in Southern California? He calls you zonies. We call you zonies. No, it's a thing. We it's call a, you zonies. It's an auto plant. Fender Corona plant. No, no, BAD, BAD. And then, so the next one is either going to be the Fender Corona plant or it's going to be Taylor. The, oh, Taylor could be Taylor or it's going to be Ernie Ball. Oh, up there. Uh, That's a. The problem with Ernie Ball is if you get those three and then you triangulate, whoever it is lives in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> also, it's a drown. It's a drown love, starting fires. They love driving, apparently, because <laughs> like the hundreds and hundreds of miles <laughs> across their range. Yeah, maybe they're walking, and that's why it's like two years apart. This crime spree is very inconvenient for whoever is doing it. All right, let's let's keep moving. <laughs> Next sponsor? Yeah. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by Bigger Pedals. Oh, pizza! You got a slice of pie here. I haven't put Velcro on mine yet. I don't think I like the way you put yours. I did it pretty sloppy. I think I would have thin just cut this like that thick, like super thin, and ran it. Maybe even just put a little square. Like the same thing you did here. I didn't do it great. I did I was trying to not cover up the big ear and tone mob logos on the back, and I just hobbled together. I think you could together. have made tiny triangles in the corners. I saw it, Ryan, and I was very disappointed. I was like, you as an artistic, crafty person, I, know. I think you did a bad job. I did a bad job. I want you to feel bad. I feel bad. It worked, though, and I, I put that Velcro on there super early in the morning before I went to church because yeah, yeah. I wanted to take this and to this church is and what play I, with it. This is what I want to say. If you think I'm being too hard on Ryan right now, Put your money where your mouth is and go buy a slice of pie. Show us your Velcro pedals. job, huh? Yeah. Pro- show us, show pro- us how you do it. Prove me wrong. Yeah. Show us that it can be done. That The, the, the Velcro on the bottom of a pizza pedal can be attractive. How's I want to see it. How's that meme go? Change my mind. <laughs> but yeah, I used this live this past Sunday. It sounded fantastic. It sounded cheesy and saucy and delicious. Mmm. And that crust, crunchy crust. <laughs> this episode is also brought to you by Chase Bliss, Bliss Audio. Audio. For pedals more creative than you are, you need to head over to Chase Bliss Audio. They come fully equipped with a digital brain and an analog heart. Except, except for the this dark one. world, which is a digital brain and a digital heart. Yeah. But that's okay. I did a video recently stacking nothing but shimmer reverbs. Uh-huh. And I am still thinking about how good this sounded. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> it has a very unique shimmer, and I keep it set up in a very unique way where it ramps back and forth in between a high octave shimmer and a low octave shimmer. Mm. It is delicious. And the shimmer setting itself is really unique in that it's not a full on all the time normal shimmer. It's like this glitchy, like sampling, popping in and out sort of shimmer sound. And I stack it before a big, rich, plate reverb Mm. it's ghostly it's beautiful it's fantastic it doesn't get boring because the octave keeps shifting and combining in different ways it's it's a beautiful and wonderful pedal so huge thanks to chase bliss for continuing to sponsor this nonsense that you all enjoy for some reason (laughs) last ad yeah this was sent by nick orman 
Did he post this in the group? I think so. This is for a series of guitar hangers. Yep. Which look more practical than aesthetic, right? I mean, this is all about, you know, the 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 practical use of a guitar hanger, suspending your guitar for safety reasons, mm-hmm. has nothing mm-hmm. to do with the looks or the aesthetics at all. No. Like, this is extremely utilitarian. has nothing to do with the fact that... That the guitar well, hangers are. Let's think about. Hold thin. on, hold on. Don't give. You know. Okay, okay. I won't give what, it away. I won't give it away. If you were trying to design a, an ergonomically perfect mm. uh, guitar hanger, how what would you use? You. I got use, it right here, Steve. Yeah. This is the perfect ergonomic yeah. guitar hanger. How, how, when I hand you a guitar, I probably am going to grab it on the neck, like yeah. maybe at the headstock to get it more secure. And I'm going to hand it to you like this. Yeah. So what better way to design a guitar hanger than in the shape of a hand? Yes. And you know what? Human hands are cool and everything, but how strong is a human hand anyways? Not as strong as to say a monster hand. <laughs> We're really like stretching hard to pitch this. Well, one, of, are... the, one of these is a human hand, right? No. Is Freddy, Freddy Krueger is not a human? No, he's a, he's a dream ghoul. Oh. I, I, he started out as a human, but he's like a, like a ghost now. But, uh, where is it? He's a, he's some sort of, specter or spirit that lives in the dream world but anyways what we've got hey, here <laughs> what we've it got here is a series of guitar hangers that are in the shape of monster hands we've got a freddy krueger hand we have a wolfman hand i believe yep. a we, frankenstein hand we have a frankenstein hand frankenstein's I, monster's hand sorry i think the white one is just the wolf hand again just unpainted uh or in a different I think it's pose? I thought it was supposed to be like a skeleton hand. Maybe. It's hard to tell. It's it doesn't have a paint theme, so it's hard to tell and it has the same claws as the wolf hand. These look really sketchy to me. <laughs> like the artwork and the painting looks top notch. Yeah, I just don't understand how they're really gonna like It looks like the guitars are barely hanging in them. Yeah. And the the picture of the telecaster that's being held up by the wolf hand. It honestly looks like the Telecaster's resting on the ground and mm-hmm. leaning against mm-hmm. the hand. So I don't know. I don't know if it can legitimately hold a guitar safely. It's also kind of amusing to me that both the Wolfman hand and the Frankenstein's monster's hand are mounted to like Eddie Van Halen shields. Right. I don't know, like, why? I don't, I, I, I guess. Okay. No, like I appreciate the artistry and, you know, this beautiful dry brushing going on on the leather parts of Freddy Krueger's glove and his exposed flesh and whatnot. Uh, it's all painted very nice and they, they look like good sculptures, but as guitar hangers, I don't trust them. And it's not just because they're monsters. I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not racist against monsters. I trust monsters. But I don't trust these hangers to hold my guitar. So one holding headphones, that's the most realistic one. Like, yeah, hold headphones, hold cables with these things. But guitars, I don't. Here's the thing. Like a, a good guitar holder, one of the things that makes them good is that they swivel. Mm-hmm. I don't think they swivel. Because like certain guitars, like a Les Paul, a 3x3 three three headstock, you want that hanger to be nice and flat like that. It can be symmetrical. The moment you put a strat in there, then it's got a tilt like that. You put a telecaster in there, man, it's really got a tilt because it doesn't have that little hook. I, I went to the website and they call these death. Someone says, I love my new death grip. <laughs> it's a good name. It's a good name for them. This spooky set is a scary, colorful, terrifying death claw set. It's a genuinely sturdy guitar hanger that will turn your home into a terrifying scene, not for the faint of heart. Um, What's the most expensive guitar you would trust on one of these? Because I'm not gonna, I'm not going to put anything of value on one of these because I'd be too afraid it's going to fall off in the middle of the night when Freddy Krueger wakes up and decides he doesn't want to hold my guitar anymore. Here's the customer reviews. Very nice product. Uh, very nice product. The cameras don't capture all of the little details. It looks even better in person. My husband loved it. It looks even more beautiful in person. Wow, wow, wow. Very clean and beautiful. Exactly what I wanted. Thank you. These people seem way too excited. That 
I that th- review had so many specifics in it that it is definitely for this product and not a general comment that could be bought by some sort of comment farm. It was definitely, my husband loves it. It's beautiful. We love the details. Yes, that is about a guitar hanger. <laughs> I'm seeing similar things on here. There's one called the Grip Reaper. There's a brand that makes one called the Grip Reaper. <laughs> These are all, all like on the, Etsy and stuff. Now, a lot of these, I will say, they do have. Uh, you can't see it, so like the the Freddy Krueger hand is at, is notched. Right, I I can see like you can see on this lower one that has the headphones that there is a notch in there, yeah. so it's not just kind of resting in there. There is a bit of a notch to hold it, but it doesn't look like enough to me. And it looks like it wouldn't be compatible with most headstocks, like. The right headstock is going to fit in there, but I have trouble believing that a wide variety of headstocks will work in these. And also, like, if there's notches and weird angles and weird edges and stuff, like, could it possibly rough up or even leave paint on your guitar? Like, here's here's my proposal for making this work. Some sort of not making the guitar hangers that look like cool, creepy hands. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm making a cool, creepy hand that you stretch over an existing good guitar hanger. Oh. So it's still a good guitar hanger underneath, but it's like a glove. Right. A themed guitar hanger glove compatible with dozens of different brands of guitar hangers. You can put them on any guitar hanger, and now you've got a theme. You've got a monster glove that will hold your guitar, but underneath you have the security of your favorite string swing or whatever. Yeah, there's a bunch of these. They're on Etsy. These are like real ones. I think well, these are real ones too. But I think they're like fake. What does that mean? Like I think they're not. I think that website on here, this uh, holdfgc.com, I think that's a fake. Oh, a fake URL. Yeah, I think okay. that's like stuff that's sh- maybe at best is shipping. This is like an AliExpress situation where you yeah. you try to order one of these and then like a you know a lithium battery shows up. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. No, these are I'm looking at this now. The nightmare glove death grip, which is what this is, is $175. And this is definitely $175 yeah. for ha- to have a wall stand that you'll never be able to sleep at night because you'll keep having nightmares that your guitar is gonna fall. And that's not just a joke on it being a Freddy Krueger hanger. Like you're gonna have real nightmares. I'm looking for the werewolf one that like matches this one. Where Do they sell them unpainted? Yeah, there's a bunch of white ones. Some I, are white and some are painted. I could see myself using one of these for like cables for cable management, mm-hmm. like especially that like that long like werewolf one. Like there's enough space on there to put a bunch of cables. Man, this werewolf one ha- looks like it has it does have hair. They would be like fun coat racks too, you know, but for holding a guitar, I just, I don't buy it. I won't buy it. Don't buy it. No, do not buy it. Ryan. All right. Tell us about the song. Steve. let's, let's call it an early. Uh, This song was sent by Greg McElroy. I think we already made a joke about whether or not he's one of the McElroy word up about 10 years ago, I recorded about a dozen demos on my Boss Micro BR that I was using at about 130% capacity. All of the electric guitars are Heritage H150 and a Les Paul bass through Boss pedals. Acoustic guitar, mandolin, harp, and vocals are recorded through the condenser mic. I think I recorded the vocals to this one while I was driving to work. This song has nothing to do with drug use, but people get tricked into listening to it. The title. My imaginary band is called... Double Wide Revival. Uh, This song is called... It's called Get High. Oh, now I see.
something about the drum fills was cracking me up. Really? Yeah. Because I can tell he, he said you recorded it like on a boss thing. Um, like they're, they're clearly drum yeah. samples, right? I believe so. Yeah. And like the, you know, all the other parts that are recorded are so very like, yeah, you can tell like you, they're recorded by a person. Mm -hmm. And then the drum samples, like when you start to listen to them, like, oh yeah, <laughs> It's like samples that came out of a piece of software or something like that. It works like, you know, like whatever tool yeah, that you have at yeah. your disposal to make your song, make your songs. Do not wait until the stars align to have everything perfect because nothing is perfect. I just thought like every now and then when there was a big like Tom roll, it was like, <laughs> it was cracking me up a little bit. I, uh, about halfway through the song, like the whole time I'm like, I'm, I'm listening. I'm like, where is there? Like, how's this guy going to work a harp into this? Then I realized that he's talking about the harmonica. A harmonica, yeah. And I was just like, oh, oh mm, that yeah. makes that makes more sense. I was getting like '70s trucker movie vibes. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 You know. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay grounded.